This is the Pico Calc by Clockwork, and today we're going to take a look at some of the software that the community has built and upgrade its brain. So that's right, we're going to upgrade to the Pico 2W, the fastest, newest, bestest Pico that is supported in here, uh, at least official Raspberry Pi Pico. Other Picos are available and are faster, but this is the one that I have on hand. So we're going to upgrade to that. And then we're going to check out some of the software that the community has been building for this thing. We had a look at this a few months ago when it first arrived. I unboxed it, got it all set up. And at the time, there wasn't a huge amount of software out there. However, that's now starting to change as more and more of these devices get into the community's hands. So let's check it out and let's see what we can do. But first things first, I'm going to 3D print a new case for this. I'd also like to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant, but more about them later. So this is my pretty cool glow-in-the-dark uh, 3D back for this. And there is actually a reason for doing it. A, because glow-in-the-dark filament is very cool, and I think it's just going to look very cool. But also, this design specifically has a slidable bit on the back that allows you to get to the Pico inside, so you can easily switch it out. With the current case, you have to unscrew the whole thing to get to it. So I think this is just a better design for my needs. It means that I can access the back whenever I want to, slide that back in there, and uh, still have a full back plate. So let's get this installed. This should be pretty easy to install, just need to unscrew all of these, remove the back, put the new back on, and then I can replace the, Pi, the Pico 1 in here with the Pico 2 W. Let's get it done. All right, so that's all done, uh, nicely installed. We've got our new easily removable back plate so you can get to the brain with no problem at all. Um, I just generally think it looks a bit nicer. Um, I didn't print a battery plate. I kind of forgot to do that, so I just used the one from the old plate. But nonetheless, I think it's a really nice 3D print. It's based off the official models released by Clockwork, and then it's just been modified. I'll link it down below, of course. Uh, but yeah, I think it's just a really cool contrasting bright color. It looks great. Um, and that's the uh, Pico 2 installed as well. So let's get some software on this. So the first project I want to have a look at now that we have our nice shiny new glowing back uh, is the PicoCal UMAC project, which is basically bringing the retro Mac emulator for Pico to the Pico Cal. Yes, you have a full Mac emulator running on this very cool device indeed. So I've already flashed the firmware for this and then you load your disk image file from the SD card. You can also have a second disk for things like uh, for data. And uh, yeah, here we go. It is straight away. You've got the keys here to move the mouse. By default, enter is click. And uh, the screen itself is, is larger than the... Uh, the screen on the device, which makes sense. It keeps a more normal resolution for this kind of device, uh, for this kind of emulation. Uh, obviously, depending on the software you're going to run would kind of depend whether or not you actually want this. Uh, but yeah, I, I must admit, I have no idea what I would use this for other than the fact that it is really freaking cool. <laughs> I, yeah, 
what what more can I say? Like, it's just really cool that this works. Uh, there isn't a whole lot of software on the ROM that I've used, um, but you could load your own software and oh, look, you could have a calculator within the emulator on a scientific calculator type device. Ooh. <laughs> but nonetheless, I, just, I don't know. I just really love this. I think it's such a cool little project. Um, and uh, yeah, I this is the kind of thing that just makes me happy. It's so silly and it is awesome. It always amazes me uh, the kind of things that community are able to come up with with projects like this. It was a little slow going to get these into people's hands, but once I had them, uh, yeah, really interesting projects like running Mac operating systems on this thing and cool 3D printed cases that give extensions to the project. This kind of thing really, really excites me. And it really inspires me to kind of brush up on my fundamentals and my electronic engineering skills, which is something that I kind of lack in, if I'm honest. And that's where today's sponsor, Brilliant, comes in. Brilliant is an interactive learning app that is really built for people that want to tinker and explore and understand how things actually work. Whether that's software, electronics, the mathematics behind it all, Brilliant has amazing courses to cover all of these things and so much more. Lately, I've been working on the digital circuits courses, mainly because I haven't touched electronic engineering since my university days, which unfortunately are very, very far behind me now. And the great thing about it is that it's not just theory, you actually have problems to solve, things to tinker with, switches to flip on the app, and all sorts of things to actually do as you're learning. And I think this is why it really fits into that maker's mindset. It's a great way to learn, certainly for me personally, where I can actually learn by doing things and solving problems, which is exactly the kind of methodology I took when I started learning to program and built up those skills. So I really feel like this is absolutely ideal. And to start trying out Brilliant today for free, please do head over to brilliant.org forward slash devwithzachary or scan the QR code on the screen now. As an exciting offer to my viewers, Brilliant is giving 20% off their annual premium subscription as well. And once again, thank you very much to today's sponsor, Brilliant, and on with the PicoCal projects. Next up, we have another very cool port. Uh, someone has ported, is it Fraughts to the Pico? I believe that's how you pronounce it but basically the uh, Fraughts, the Z machine game emulator thing. What does that mean? Well, that means we can play some really classic text adventures on here without a problem at all. For example, I've loaded Zork onto the SD card and straight away we are in, we can play this text adventure and kind of read through and understand everything. I've never actually played this to be fair. I look forward to actually trying it. Uh, and if you can read that, it kind of gives you what to do, and then you get a prompt and you have to do stuff. So I don't know, I can write, say help, for example. Uh, and I says, hey, I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, uh, you can basically play this text adventure game and go through it. There's loads of these games available online for you to download and try out as well. So if you want kind of a really cool retro handheld text adventure, and to be fair, this keyboard really isn't that bad at all. It's quite usable. Uh, this is a really cool project to try out. Uh, so yeah, again, another one that I think is really, really great and just, just really unique and different. So that's cool. I love it. Onwards. Next up, we have a whole operating system. <laughs> PicoWare is this really cool project that seems to be one developer. And basically, it's a whole operating system for this machine that comes bundled with a bunch of applications. Now that we have that Pico 2W installed, uh, we've got access to things like Wi-Fi, like we can go in and we can connect to Wi-Fi. Um, so we need to, I, I assume we need to scan for Wi-Fi first, that makes sense. And yeah, we find some Wi-Fi networks local to me. That is so cool. Uh, it has applications built in. So you've got like a file browser to view the files on that on the SD card, which is very, very cool. Don't you just love how Macs just put so many trash files onto your media? Isn't that just great? Uh, but <laughs> lots and lots of stuff going on here. Uh, of course, the thing that I'm really interested in is some games. There's a game here called Doom. Okay, so it's not it's not it's not Doom as we know it, 
but it's a it's a kind of stripped down version. Now let's go back and we can have a look at some other stuff as well. There's a, a Flappy Birds clone. Oh, that's pretty cool. It runs very slow, but that is pretty cool that it's working. And other things as well. There's Tetris. We all do love a bit of Tetris. Oh yeah, that's pretty playable actually. Not too bad at all. Um, yeah, this is this is just very cool that someone, and it seems like it's literally just one developer, has built this whole operating system basically with full access to all these different things. Now, there is one application I really want to have a look at, which is this Flip Social. So I'm going to connect this up to the Wi-Fi and then we will see what that's all about. Well, I couldn't get it to connect to the network, which is a shame. It just kind of sits at connection initiated. Doesn't show up on my network. That's a shame. But still, very, very cool project that someone is basically single-handedly doing. Love this. Okay, let's go check out something else. The final thing I wanted to take another look at was the NES emulator for this. So we did have a brief look at it when we unboxed and set it all up. But using the Pico 1, you're limited to ROMs of size 41 kilobytes or smaller, just because that's what's left memory-wise for the, to actually load the ROM. Well, the Pico 2 has a lot more RAM available to it, and uh, there is a build for the NES emulator for the Pico 2. So I want to just have a little bit of an experiment and see kind of how big of a ROM will load. So I've loaded up a couple of different ROMs. I've added the numbers are the size in kilobytes of how big those ROMs are. So let's try out a few of them and see how big we can go. I mean, we'll start with Bomberman, which should work no problem at all. So yes, Bomberman plays no problem at all. It's a shame that the resolution isn't using the whole screen. Considering it is a square screen, I feel like you could do that. Um, there's no reason not to, but hey, what do I know? This is what it is. Uh, maybe some upscaling could be done. I don't know. But this is cool. So next up is that 41 kilobytes Super Mario which is, as far as the old one was concerned, the largest you could go. And I must admit, the speaker is not the best on here, both in the emulator and in general. Like, it's hardly a, a great speaker. But it's still kind of cool that you can play these games on a Pico. Uh, you know, this really low-end hardware at this point. And, it, and it's running, I would say, pretty much full speed. Maybe a little bit of slowdown, but yeah, happy with that. But that is at the 41 kilobytes. So let's see about something a bit bigger. That's not a good sign. Hmm. Let's try Beetlejuice here. Unfortunately, it does look like it still has the same memory limits as the Pico 1 version which is a shame because that shouldn't really be the case. Maybe that's something we can work on in the future. Nonetheless, still very cool that you can run the emulator on this thing. And I just, I don't know, I just love the aesthetic, the chunkiness, the, the whole thing. And now it even glows. So can't really complain there. Amazing. Well, there we have it. I think we're going to leave it there for today. I must admit my favorite is still running Mac operating systems on this little tiny thing. And I think we're going to see a lot more evolution for this device as it continues to get into the hands of communities because it does kind of ship in batches. It's a slow process to get it out to everyone that wants one. So I'm really excited to see what more can be done in the community. There's also lots of interesting projects about getting different devices instead of the Pico Pi compatible in there. Um, I know there is a Pico form factor board that has uh, full Linux support, so that would be cool. Uh, and yeah, just generally lots of really cool stuff. So I have no doubt this will not be the last video we do on this project, uh, but I'm just enjoying seeing what evolves and what gets created. So once again, I do just want to say a quick thank you to today's sponsor. Brilliant. And again, do go check out the link down below if you are interested in starting to learn something new. Excellent. All right. In which case, we are going to wrap it up there for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and subscribe. We're still a very small channel. Every single subscription really does make a big 
difference and helps me towards my goal of 10,000 subscribers this year. But other than that, thank you very much, and I'll see you again for a video very, very soon. Bye for now.